Welcome. I'm John Skinner, Regional Agronomy Manager for the Central Region with Bex Hybrids. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about broadcast fertilizer applications versus strip till banding. Now, for us at PFR, this is something that we haven't tested for quite a few years using the strip till versus broadcast, but some new data within the industry and from universities, along with questions from you guys at home, have led us to start testing strip till again. One of the big reasons that we wanted to start testing strip till again was some, some information that we got from the University of Illinois, from Scott Foxhoven and Dr. Fred Brelow's lab. Okay, so this is the average of five sites from 2014 through 2016 crop years. And what they came to find, as you look in the upper left of that graph, is that the farther fertilizer was placed away from the row, the row in which the corn plant is growing, the lower yield they saw. And I thought that was, that was very interesting. So if we look at a strip till application, we're obviously going to plant right on top of that row. So we would be at the zero inches away bar, the highest yield on the graph in which you see now. The other thing that they showed in their data was that the closer the row was to the banded fertilizer application, the higher biomass they had at V6. So that's more plant material, broader leaves, better stalks, better roots in that situation, and again, carrying over to yield. So we wanted to dive into that, and we did slowly in 2019 with one study at our Atlanta location. We tested our typical rate of 150 pounds to the acre of MAP blended with 150 pounds to the acre of potash and broadcast that over the plot. We also strip tilled that 100% rate and then stair stepped it down in 20% increments all the way down to 40% of that rate. And you can see from the graph here that the lowest applied fertilizer rate was our highest ROI by a considerable amount, $47.19 to the acre. So when you see results like that in a one year period, it really, it really makes you think about making this program a little more intensive and seeing what we can really do, not only to push yield, but potentially reduce our fertilizer use, okay? So that's the how we got to the concept. But one reason we wanna look at why does banding fertilizer tend to work in these studies? And the way you gotta do that is you gotta look at the way in which a plant uptakes fertility from the soil. There's three main ways in which this happens. You have root interceptions. That's basically as that root grows, it comes in contact with the soil solution as well as other soil colloids and it can pick up those nutrients and take them in. Mass flow, that's nutrients that move with water. So the easiest way to think about this would be our nitrogen. Most of the corn, the most of the nitrogen that the corn plant takes in comes from mass flow. Now diffusion, this is a big one for our dry fertilizer uh, uptake into the plant. These are nutrients that move away from high areas of concentration to areas of low areas of concentration. So when you have diffusion, nutrients like potassium and phosphorus to some extent, basically what happens is that root grows into an area. It takes up those nutrients from that area and then other nutrients are allowed to move into that area. That's a simple explanation of how diffusion works. And that's the majority of the way we get our potassium and phosphate into a corn plant. So let's visualize that. When we start looking at broadcast applications, which you see on the right hand side here, if we just top dress them there, specifically in a no-till environment, we see a lot of stratification at the top. A lot of those nutrients stay right there as our corn roots grow down. If we do aggressive tillage with the moorboard plow, we scatter those out and then bury some of that uh, nutritional value at a depth below the root zone for that early season growth and development. When we band it, we place it directly below the seed, directly below where those roots are going to come out so that that plant has easier access to it earlier in the season and potentially with a concentrated zone there, we can use less fertilizer in those applications. 
So after looking at the university data and understanding how strip till could potentially benefit us with the plant uptake aspect of it, we set out to put some protocols together. So as you look what we did in the year 2020, we had two sites, Indiana and Kentucky PFR. We had sites that were no-till broadcast. We had sites that were strip till banded, as well as conventional till broadcast. And what we used in that was a picture you see on the left-hand side of your screen. But to learn more about that piece of equipment, I want to throw it to Jared Chester, our London, Ohio PFR lead, and he will teach you about that strip till implement. Hi, my name is Jared Chester. I'm part of the Bex PFR team at our London, Ohio site. And today we're excited to share with you the start of our new strip tillage study. So we've got some partners in this, in this study. First, we've got uh, Maverick Row Units from Yetter Manufacturing. We've got a Valmar box from Salford. And the group at Finning Equipment has kind of helped us put the whole project together and get it up and going. We've received a lot of questions in terms of strip tillage. So the two main goals of this first year with this new study is to answer a couple questions. The first being is, is there an advantage to going to a system such as this. So a guy that's maybe broadcasting his fertilizer in the spring or fall and then no tilling or full conventional tillage, is there an advantage to actually banding the nutrients and then just doing the tillage in the strips? The second question that we want to answer and learn more about is can we be more efficient by banding our nutrients right where we're planting? So what we're actually doing this first year is we're actually going to have different rates in terms of what we broadcast versus what we band and see if we can be more efficient by banding Banding those nutrients. To give you a further understanding of these Maverick Yetter units that we're running, we've got a notch colder to help cut residue before we actually start the tillage. Uh, we've got a set of a wheels to ensure depth. Um, the whole unit is actually on a set of parallel arms that have downforce springs, so it lets each individual unit be independent of the bar, similar to a planter row unit to better follow the contour of the ground. Uh, next, these units have a set of row cleaners to actually move that residue before we do the tillage. Then we've got the, the shank and then also the concave notch colders to hip that dirt. And then on the back there, we've got that paddle wheel just to help bust clods and mellow that planting strip for the following spring. So one interesting thing about this study is we're actually comparing banded versus broadcasted fertilizer. So to do that, we're actually going to do both applications with this unit. Um, we're simply going to broadcast and let the, this Valmar box then meter to those uh, deflector plates. That way, we take any variability in terms of going from rate to rate and from system to system to try and get this data as tight and as good as we possibly can. We got three of these strip bars for this first year of testing. What I think is going to be really interesting is we're setting this up as a multi-location, multi-year study. So it's going to be really neat in a few years to be able to compare each of those different locations starting fertility rates and their soil type and organic matter and then be able to correlate that and relate that to the results that we find. So stay tuned and we hope to bring you more updates coming this spring. Thanks and have a great day. So Jared talked about some of those potential advantages we may have versus no-till and some of those potential advantages we may have versus conventional till using this strip till bar. Obviously we can place our fertilizer precisely under the row, so there's an advantage we would have. But this picture really shows an advantage that I think we have on the no-till side. If you think back to most of the springs we've had in the last three years, we have experienced some periods of wetness. So when we have a strip tilled out there and not a flat mat of residue, we tend to dry out a little quicker and have a little bit warmer of a soil temperature. And that could explain some of what we're seeing on this picture here. You can see on the left-hand side of this picture, that's a no-till broadcast fertilizer applied. So that plant had to fight through some residue. It did not have necessarily a clean tilled environment to come out of the ground quicker. These plants, in the strip till banded and the conventional till broadcast are in about that V6, whereas the no-till plant is a little bit behind. At this point, maybe about one growth stage. The other advantage we may have over conventional till by using the strip till is we do leave some of that residue on the surface and in between the rows. That could help with some of these heavy spring rains we've had and not getting that sheet erosion or runoff 
where we can capture some of that rainfall and keep it in the soil profile instead of having it run off. So there's pros and cons to each system, but those are just a couple quick ones that we like to highlight from this picture here. For a few more in-season observations, I'll turn it over now to our Central Indiana PFR team and see what they notice throughout the season. Good afternoon and welcome to this edition of the PFR Report. I'm Brady Rogers and today I have with me Ellie Schuler. Ellie is our PFR agronomy intern, so she is kind of in charge of going out into our plots and seeing why certain treatments do what they do, uh, kind of getting a little bit deeper dive. So today we're at our nutrient management broadcast versus banded. This is a very new study, um, but basically what we're comparing is, is it better to take your fertilizer, your dry fertilizer, and throw it over the top? Do you work it in after you do that, or do you put it and like a strip till bar and band it, okay? And then plant directly over that. So we've been kind of seeing quite a few differences out here, especially early on. Um, it's starting to fade away a little bit, but we still have a little bit of growth stage differences out here. Ellie, what have we been seeing out here? Yeah, so from early on, we saw root uh, development differences. We saw entire growth stage differences and even just color differences overall. And that's, um, con that's continued throughout even up to now at V7, V8 stage. Okay, so when we came in here, we did so we did four different rates on the banded. We did three on the conventional and the no-till broadcast. So we went basically our blend was a map and a potash 50/50 blend, and we started at the very top and did 150 pounds of each, so a 300 pound total 50/50 blend, and then we started taking stair steps back. So we ended at a 300, a 225, a 150, and then I think we did a a 75 on the banded just to see can we actually drop those rates if we're starting to put that fertilizer exactly where that plant needs it right yep okay and so what were we seeing with root growth where's what's better what's worse so the strip till banded um, overall just more root growth more vertical root growth um, conventional broadcast was the next um, and then no-till which was a lot less root growth overall and just didn't look near as good okay so banded, being more precise with our fertilizer, putting exactly where that plant needs it. And we kind of see that with a lot of our studies that we do, uh, whether that be like a two by two by two study, that concentration and the accuracy of your application, it tends to pay pretty well. And we start seeing that astronomical out here, honestly. Um, so let's go out here and take a, few, take a couple looks at a couple plants. So we're out in the 300 pound pass of no-till broadcast and strip-till banded and we dug up some plants just to kind of show you guys the differences we were talking about. So in my hands I have the no-till broadcast. It's at V7 and just looking at the root growth, nothing impressive there. Um, not a lot of vertical growth, just not really what you want in a plant. Looking at the conventional till, we're at V8, a lot better root growth, but again could use some work. Okay. And then I am, I am holding the banded study and look at the root growth on this, the preferential root growth that's really just trying to run after that band of fertilizer. And I, I would say at least two times as much root growth as your no-till, and then at least a little bit bigger than your conventional. You get a little, little, lot more vertical root growth out of it. Um, but yeah, that looks like a pretty healthy plant. We also are noticing uh, plant height differences. So between the no-till and the strip, you can see there's a good four to five inches difference. And with that too, you can see the plant health overall is a lot better. When you look across the field, you can see color differences and just overall a lot better. So when were we starting to see the, the growth stage differences in these? Back in V5. Okay, so pretty early then. So we started noticing that fairly early and so Another thing I want to talk about is just banded was kind of a thing of the past and I think it's starting to make its turn for a little bit more of the future because placement is key guys. It has been with everything we've tested. The nice thing about a banded, whether you're no-till guy or conventional till guy, being more accurate with that application and putting it exactly where that plant needs, it's huge differences. So. I think it's a, I think it's a win-win for any farmer out there. Um, like I said, this is our first year doing the study, so we don't know yield results or anything like that. But stay tuned; we can't wait to show you the data. We're actually going to do a two-part video system today. Um, 
just because we're so excited about this study, we're gonna send you to Kentucky right now to see what they're seeing. So I think that's it for me and Ellie. You guys have a great day. Thank you. Welcome to the Kentucky PFR, everyone. My name is Brandon Summers. I'm the PFR lead here at the Henderson facility. With me, I got Camille Lambert. She's the field agronomist for this area. And we wanted to follow up on Indiana's video and show you what we're seeing in our nutrient management study as well. And we're seeing very similar results to them as far as the root mass and growth. Uh, you can see in the plant I'm holding here, this was the treatment of 150 pounds of MAP and 150 pounds of potash uh, banded. And Camille has that same mixture, uh, only conventionally spread over the top and worked in. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference. And we have a picture here for you to see uh, the root mass as well. Yeah, so this study was planted on April 11th and we went through kind of a cold spell. So we early on saw some nutrient tie up in the banded part of the study that concerned us for a little bit, but it didn't seem to slow these plants down because the banded part is an entire growth stage ahead of the conventional part of this study. And so having that, that extra growth um, is really helping these plants because of that cold spell we went through. This is 6414 V2P. We're seeing a little bit of crown rot in this study here. So I'm excited to follow this all the way through harvest to see if we get a little bit of uh, premature death which sometimes happens with crown rot with this extra root mass that we've got you know it's an extra growth stage ahead i'm interested to see what our yield results will show yeah so we'll be following this video up with the yield data this fall uh, we thank you guys for joining us today and encourage you to subscribe like and follow us on facebook and twitter and we hope you have a great day thanks Along with the visual difference that they observed in the plots, they want to test for things that you can't necessarily see with the naked eye, and that's nutrient concentration within the plant. So these were all tested at R1 between the different rates on the conventional till broadcast. And you can see a very consistent rate, 2.34% K in those leaves, all the way up to 2.40%. And that's in a normal range. When we look at tissue testing at the R1 time frame. We're looking to have our K concentration in that leaf be between 1.8 and 3%. So across many different application rates on the conventional till broadcast, all in a very optimum uh, percent concentration. The same thing was too with the no-till broadcast. Although we did see a little bit more variance between rates, there wasn't any drastic differences that one was ex extremely high in K concentration or one was extremely low in potassium concentration. So that's just what we want to see when we're doing these strip till banded and different fertilizer rate studies is to make sure that when we cut our rate, we're not hurting that plant. They still have sufficient nutrient concentrations when they need them. Another thing we looked at was the strip till banded. And you got to remember, there's one rate on there that we only applied 37 and a half pounds of potash and 37 and a half pounds of MAP. So 25% of what we considered a normal rate. As we did see a little bit of that potassium concentration fall in those leaves, by no means was it in a low category or something that would cause concern or need of a rescue application. Same thing happened at the Kentucky site. Those were all tested at the R1 growth stage as well. And these are the results we saw. So a little different view on it here, but basically what we're seeing is that these all stayed in a very consistent straight line manner. On the nitrogen concentration, you do see a little bit of ups and downs, which is to be expected. A lot of times that nitrogen range is broader, so no big differences there, all in a range in which they would be considered sufficient when you're looking at the nutrient concentrations. Now, another advantage that has been seen in strip till, and this is very interesting information, this is actually on soybeans, and it focuses on the penetration resistance of the root of that soybean. So when we have a strip till versus no till environment, the strip till being the green bar with the squares, the no till being the yellow bar with the triangles, we see that those roots have to emit less force to grow through the soil profile. That's a huge thing in both corn and soybeans, and we'll see it what we had from our Kentucky site on this slide. You can see the root differences at 
the same time of the year where the strip till banded one has greater root mass, greater root depth. Uh, it definitely ran into less resistance in its growth. And you can see down here at the bottom, it's one full growth stage ahead. So here for the last little bit, I've been telling you some advantages and showing you some visuals and showing you some nutrient concentrations that must lead you to believe that our strip till is going to highly out yield our broadcast no-till or our broadcast conventional till in 2020. But that's the unique thing about PFR. If everything we did worked, we wouldn't have to do it anymore. We just take the products and promote them and it'd all be fine. But you can see here on this graph, now these are the Indiana results on this page, that our highest ROI treatment was 112 and a half pounds of potash and 112 and a half pounds of MAP that was broadcast supplied and conventionally worked. $18.81 advantage over the control of 150 pounds of potash and 150 pounds of MAP broadcast conventionally tilled. Now, the reason we feel that we saw these results this year where the strip till banded was considerably behind in yield and ROI had to do with that early growth and development. We showed you different growth stages from V5 to V8 to V12 where those corn plants that were strip till banded were one to two leaf stages ahead. When you get one to two leaf stages ahead and you get into July where you have 90 degree temperatures and it's very hot and dry and those plants that were further along in their growth and development pollinate in that window, it takes a toll on your yield. Whereas slightly after those pollinated, the plants that were further behind caught some rain, temperatures cooled off, and they were, they were in a lot better shape after pollination. So that's the story here at the, at, in 2020 at the Indiana site. Let's take a look at 2020 at the Kentucky site. Now this is the one that interests me the most and will lead this study on to future, future trials and future strips. But you can see down here at the bottom of the screen, 37 and a half pounds of potash and 37 and a half pounds of MAP gave us the highest ROI in that trial. Now, it did not make the highest yield, but by reducing that fertilizer rate by 75%, we were able to not give up very much yield and capitalize on the difference in cost in those programs to have a higher ROI. Strip till versus broadcast applications. Very new studies here for PFR. I'm excited to bring future years of testing and future years of results to you on your farms and hope we can find some information that makes strip till a PFR proven process. Thank you for your time. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. <laughs>